Welcome back. We are on Unit 2, Lesson 3, Basic Operation. My beard's a little crazy because I had to wash out all the pizza sauce from lunchtime. But anyways, we're going to be talking about the motorcycle and all the different functions and basically what it is that you need to do to make it work. Okay, I know we're going to talk about that in the goals. Rookies will be able to operate the controls efficiently and safely. Now, here's the thing. We have to talk about it in class before we go out on the bike. Before you do this... I don't want you practicing and understanding and trying to learn everything while doing it. So let's learn it now, then we'll go out, okay? So we're here real quick. Rookies will learn how to mount and dismount the motorcycle. Pretty simple, but you'd be surprised. Anyways, uh, rookies will learn how to start the motorcycle, control the motorcycle, operate, you know, shifting, downshifting, turning, braking, and properly share the road, okay? So the skills that you will actually have is you'll be able to demonstrate it. So you'll go in the uh, parking lot or you'll go in your garage, wherever you have your bike and go ahead and sit on it and get off it. We'll get to that point, but you'll be able to also operate the controls efficiently and properly share the road. You'll actually be able to do it. Oh, you almost kicked me. Uh, mounting, dismounting, and controlling your motorcycle. This is very important. You have to know how to get on and off without falling over, okay? Best way to figure it out, and we did talk about it, going to the dealership, sitting on it, you know, figuring you know, what is a good spot for you, so before you purchase a motorcycle, you need to make sure you are physically able to ride it. And like I said, going to the dealership, figuring it out, maybe leaning it over one side, put it on your foot, put it on the other foot, see how comfortable you are getting on and off. Okay, so this is going to help you out before you even go to the dealership so you know how to get on and off. So the main thing here, make sure it's not too big, not too small. You overestimate it quite a bit. A lot of people do. Okay. It's 250 pounds, 300 pounds, 500 pound motorcycle. Oh, not that bad. They're just sitting there until it starts to fall over a little bit. So in general, it's good to seek out a motorcycle. You can comfortably keep stabilized while mounted. This is clearly essential in traffic, but motorcycle riding is also an exhausting activity. You know, not a lot of people understand that you're having to move and make minor adjustments, move your body and change everything out. I talk about dancing with your bike. It literally is like dancing with your bike. You're having to move to keep it going, moving left and right, straight, all that stuff. It is very exhausting. Just go ahead and do an hour-long ride and see how exhausted you are. You should make sure you're physically able to support the weight of your motorcycle even at the end of a long ride or during a riding condition such as extreme heat or cold or wind. It's not up there. Windy days are terrible, especially if you have a crosswind. You are fighting that wind, and it's kind of scary, but it takes a lot of energy out of you. So make sure you guys are paying attention to that. Assuming you're mounting a motorcycle that suits your physique. So remember, short people, usually cruisers are pretty good. Step through for scooters are really good. Sport bikes are actually kind of tall. So be aware of that. It's as easy as holding the handlebars from the left and squeezing the front brake lever to make sure that the motorcycle doesn't roll. Okay, so remember we talked about having it in neutral in the last lesson. So now what we're doing is holding the handlebars, squeezing that front brake so it doesn't roll back and forth when you're trying to get on. Imagine trying to get on while it's moving. That's, don't do that. So after you've done that, you're ready to start the motorcycle, okay? So you can read all that stuff. Basically, you're sitting on it, right? Now, we got to know how to get off first before we start it, right? So we said getting ready to start, that's normal operations, but let's go ahead and practice the dismount part. So dismounting is easy. Just reverse the process. Shift to first gear, flip the cutoff switch to the cutoff position, okay? So now we're talking about, you know, we're finished the ride. We're turning the key or turning off the engine cutoff switch. And then you're going to go ahead and reverse it. So once again, hold that front brake, get that leg over, and then go ahead and uh, release everything. We're going to do this out on the range. We're going to do this out in the parking lot. And we're going to figure it out and so you can see it because I don't want you just listening and reading. I want you actually to see it. So a good pre-start routine will help you as you're learning to ride. It will remind you of what to do and when to properly start your motorcycle. So starting the motorcycle is pretty important. We talk about mindset, and I'll go in the review process of this at the end of this. but the main thing here is getting in that mindset, okay, I'm on the bike, I'm prepped and ready, let's get it going, let's have it a set routine so I do it every single time and I can memorize it. So we use the INC method, okay, so ignition start neutral, engine cutoff switch, and the clutch slash choke, okay. It's not the full process, but it's going to get you started. So once again, the ignition start, okay, remember INC, ignition start, you need to turn the supply valve if you have one. The main thing here is go ahead and turn the ignition, make sure it says on, it's not all the way. We're not turning the motorcycle all the way on. We're turning the battery on. We're getting ready for this process. Okay. Click. Now we have to make sure we're neutral. What we can do is kind of roll it back and forth. And I'll show you when we're out in the parking lot. Roll back and forth if you can. Once again, it might not be comfortable for you. You could sit on it and kind of tiptoe back and forth. If you can move, you're in neutral. If it stops you, 
you're in gear, okay? Also, utilize that uh, green N. That's going to say it's neutral. Once again, I said I didn't trust it too much. That's why I like to walk it and also confirm with the N. All right, engine cutoff switch. So now it's going to be turning it to on if it's an off position. So once again, we turned on the ignition. Hey, it looks like it's neutral. I double checked it by rolling it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the engine cutoff switch is set to where it's connected, because if you disconnect it, it's gonna be off, put it to on or run position, because if, if you don't, it's not gonna start. Okay, so the clutch slash choke. Okay, so with the choke, you're supposed to pull it out so it gets at higher RPMs when you first start the motorcycle, but we're gonna be talking about the clutch too, okay? So always squeeze the clutch when starting your motorcycle, disengage the engine from the wheel. That is important because like I said, we're rolling back and forth. Hey, we're neutral, neutral green light. Just in case you accidentally clicked your foot down the first gear and it popped it into gear and now you start and boom, it goes. So always remember primary safety control basically is that clutch. Squeeze it in, it removes power. Just in case it wants to take off on you, it can't, there's no power. Some motorcycles even require the clutch lever to be fully pressed in to start in the first place. Once again, some manufacturers make it a safety feature just like the side stand safety feature. It can be helpful if the motorcycle is having trouble starting due to cold weather. So you wanna pull that choke, but if the choke is needed, make sure to turn it off once your motorcycle is running. You don't want it having high RPMs while you're going down the street. You only wanna use it for the purpose of, if it's a cold weather, it needs to have the higher RPMs and warm up a little bit. Also, if it has a different fuel mix, your, read your owner's manual when it comes to the choke, it's always gonna say, turn it off once you're in operating mode, okay? All right, operating a motorcycle with a manual transmission. This is very important, manual transmission, because with a scooter or anything that has automatic transmission like an African Twin or a Honda Rebel 1100, which is coming out, the DCT, all that stuff, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the manual transmission, so this clutch and the shift levers, okay? Lots to read here. This is that shift lever on that Honda that we have, that sport bike. And so given virtually all new models of cars come with automatic transmission, younger riders getting into motorcycling may never have used a manual transmission. Trust me, not a lot of people do it. I had to learn on my own. Actually, that's how I was able to go from car to motorcycle pretty easily because I understood friction zone and everything. So if you aren't there yet, if you have never driven a truck or a car or anything like that, four wheels, with a manual transmission, this is very, very important. If you have, it's gonna sound like a refresher. Uh, learning how a manual transmission works is a small but sometimes challenging part of operating your motorcycle, so it will be covered here. Now, the handbook we're talking about is our Smart Rider Basic Training ebook, okay? So you might wanna check that out, it's on the shop. So shifting gears is the process of aligning the engine speed measured in revolutions per minute. Just make sure you read your owner's manual, but here, the main thing here is finding that special zone. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that, getting that RPMs up to a certain point, then you shift. RPMs down to a certain point because you're slowing down, then you're gonna shift. So when you hear people in second gear trying to go 60 miles an hour, it's like That's because you're not in the right gear. It's not because your engine is just, that's how it sounds. No, 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 you need to go into third or fourth gear at that point. So it's not like, it's just a normal engine flow. So if you're ever in a position where you're like in second gear or first gear, okay, let's say we're in first gear and you're going and it's like 20 miles an hour and you're just like, you need to go into second gear, okay? So you need to do it before it even gets to that point. All right, friction zone right here, very, very important. We need to understand this. This is me out in a parking lot doing some slow speed maneuvers, utilizing the friction zone, utilizing the throttle in a correct way, direct steering, looking where I want to go. You just can't see my head. Friction zone, very, very important. It's gonna get you going from the stop to start. It's gonna help you when it comes to shifting. It's gonna help you when it comes to slow speed stuff. So your clutch lever controls what is known as the friction zone, a narrow range of the clutch where engine power is only partially engaged to the rear wheel of the motorcycle, okay? Very, very, very important. You can see on the left hand, I have it underneath so you can see where for me on my bike, it's about there, okay? So we can talk about it a little bit. Let's go ahead and get bigger here. So right here, let's say this is five four, three, two, one. One is all the way closed. Most motorcycles are about two and a half, three. So in between one and five, about halfway is when you start to really move. It could be two for you. So it could be one, two. It could be four, one, or I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five is out. So it could be four for you. It could be three for you. Always figure out what it is on your motorcycle. But this is kind of the, the visual representation, okay? So while you don't fully want to release the clutch until your motorcycle is fully in motion, 
Use of the friction zone to get your motorcycle started is one of the most intricate maneuvers you can master on a motorcycle. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of cool stuff. Your hands, your left hand is going to get sore, and that's what we're talking about when it comes to making sure you're in shape for this stuff. But yeah, your left hand's going to get sore because you're constantly using that in slow speed maneuvers. Uh, when you're out riding, not too much, okay? It's just going to be when you're shifting. So upshifting is the process of shifting to a higher gear when your engine speed and RPMs is beginning to outpace your motorcycle's road speed. So in other words, your motorcycle's engine is working harder than needed to maintain your current speed. So you're going to feel it. You're going to hear it. Uh, utilize the RPM sound or utilize the RPM tachometer to let you know when it is you need to shift. And before you know it, it's going to become natural, especially if you've been on this bike or your bike for, for any length of time, that it's just going to be feeling natural. It's like, oh, got to shift, got to downshift. I know what my bike needs. I feel it. I hear it. Don't even have to look at the tachometer. That's when you know you're doing really well. Okay, but go ahead and use your tachometer for now if you need to. So by upshifting, you allow your motorcycle to match with your engine speed. So to upshift, close the throttle completely. So boom, it's closed. Okay, remember, we're, we're breaking it down into steps. So fully closed, let's say we're closed. Squeezing your clutch lever fully. So squeeze, okay, lift the gear shift with my, my Crocs. So lifted it up, and we're gonna do this out on the range so you can see it a little bit better, and then release the clutch. And then you have to then go ahead and start going a little bit, obviously, if you wanna go ahead and keep going. So what it looks like at the end of the day, and we're gonna go on the range, like I said, is that we're riding, we have a little bit of throttle, we're going, we're not even cl uh, clenching the, the clutch, we have our hands all the way around the handlebars, we're riding, oh, I got to upshift, so I'm going to roll off the throttle, squeeze, upshift, release the th uh, clutch, and then roll on the throttle. It's going to be like this married way of doing it before you know it, but the first few times, and maybe even the first month, it's going to be really janky, okay, and that's fine. That's why you want to practice, practice, practice until it gets smooth. The goal is smooth. Before you, you see how I'm not even moving really? That's the goal. And we'll do that out on the range, okay? It's a little bit hard to do it in class, right? You guys are all eating, making all this noise. Chew with your mouth closed, rookies. Come on now, all right? So downshifting, same process, but now down, okay? So instead of lifting up on the foot, you're going to push down on it, okay? So downshifting has several purposes. One primary purpose is engine braking. So what you're doing is when you downshift, you're slowing the RPMs of the engine down, which is going to cause the bike to slow down. So it's going to slow everything down because the actual engine is slowing down. So that's called engine braking. There's a high in-depth process to that and explanation for it. But just realize when you downshift and you roll off or back, uh, I'm sorry, just realize when you downshift and you release that clutch, it's going to feel a little bit like that, okay? So the goal is to make it a smooth, so it's just kind of a slow down. So downshifting. Before engine braking, ensure you're traveling slow enough to downshift safely. So you don't want to just downshift on the interstate for no reason. So don't let the motor rev into the tachometer's red line, because you can do that. You could be going, like I said, on the interstate. You're going 75 miles an hour. You downshift to fourth gear. <sighs> There goes the red line because now you're going too fast for the engine speed. You want to match it. So you want to keep it where it needs to be. So close the throttle completely to ensure you're slow enough to warrant downshifting, squeezing your clutch full lever fully. This looks familiar, right? Press down on the gear shift firmly. That's the difference. Pressing down versus going up. So don't stomp on it. Okay. So it's just a nice little press. Okay. Once for every gear shift. It's important to be careful with the clutch as the motorcycle is in process of engine braking. And releasing the clutch all at once could put unjust pressure on your drivetrain or cause your rear tire to skid and slide a little bit. So just like upshifting, we're going to do the same process, but we're just going to apply down pressure instead of up pressure. And we don't want to let it go super quick. Like I said, you want to let it go, get it in that friction zone, match it with that throttle and get going. Okay. Turning. Ooh, look at that. You got little tennis balls. Okay. Tennis balls are very important. I love them. Cut them in half. Boom. You got two cones. Anyways, turning. How do you handle turns will differ depending on your speed and the radius of the turn. So think of a very sharp turn at a, at a stop sign versus a nice long arcing turn out in the mountains or on, on the track. Okay, so sharp turn, long radius turn. You want to approach the turn slowly enough that you will not need to apply the brakes during the turn. You will actually want to be slowly, steadily applying throttle throughout the course of your turn to help pull you through at an even speed. So it is important to approach your turns with this in mind. So what that means is that you need to slow down before the turn if you're going too fast and maintain that speed before the turn throughout the turn. You don't want to be hauling ass, oh, now I got to turn, now I got to brake. That's where you get in trouble. So slow down before the turn. 
So if it's a very sharp 90 degree turn, slow down a lot. If it's nice wide arcing, you might need to slow down a little bit, depending on what you're currently working on. This keeps the contact point of the tires doing what they should. The front tire changes the direction of the bike while the rear tire keeps the bike accelerating. Very, very important because when you're turning, you need traction. Obviously, you're gonna slide out. So going too fast well, might take it away. Braking hard in the middle of a turn might take it away. All right, so tight turns. Here we go. This is me in the turn. You can see my little friction zone behind the letters. For tight turns, you will want to counterweight your motorcycle as you turn. So we're going to talk about that out on the range. A lot of this stuff is going to sound like, what? A lot of this is going to be sounding a little weird, but when we show it to you on the range with the verbiage, counterweighting, it's like, what is that? When I show it to you, you're going to understand it. So we're going to go out on the range for this. But you need to know this part. So read this, read this, read this. So I'm going to read the second. So counterweighting is a challenging skill to learn on a motorcycle. There are several key elements to the technique that you must understand to be successful. This is a skill that can be difficult to visualize, right? And must be felt to fully understood, okay? So practice lots until you start to feel a bit more confident. We have that on this course. We'll be going out there and doing it. So just understand tight turns is something that you need to be focused on, okay? Well, there's a lot more to go, and we jumped from understanding the motorcycle getting on it, and then now we're just now branching into riding it. So we have a part two to this. So right now, go ahead and take a break. Take a little pee-pee break. Go ahead and grab yourself a slice of pizza. Fill up your drinks. We have some over there in the little refrigerator, and we're going to jump right into part two.